The transfer window is finally here and we've got two positions that we want to upgrade. That's right guys, welcome back to another episode in the Newcastle career mode here on the channel. We are entering the January transfer window. We want to upgrade goalkeeper and left back and as you guys know, you're the ones that pick the transfers. So get into the comments right now and recommend me a goalkeeper and a left back that we should be signing. And also, if there's any other players you think we should bring into the club to get us all the way up to the end of this season, let me know that as well. Whilst you're down there, please hit a like on this video and subscribe to the channel because we're trying to hit many milestones in the next couple of months in the lead up to FIFA 23. Looking at our youth academy, we've actually got a goalkeeper here who could be an 81 to 87 potential in goal. But that's going to take far too much time. We need a player right now who can come in and make a difference. Munoz has gone back to Santos Laguna. I still don't know who Munoz is. Our next step to winning the Premier League title is a game up against Southampton. We're going with the standard team. Isaac is now 84 rated. James Ward-Prowse has gone up to an 82. Van der Beek an 83. Pulisic in 84 as well. A lot of our players are improving under our reign, so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's see how they get on against Southampton. This should be a pretty straightforward fixture, but as we learned in the last episode, if you haven't checked it out, go and watch it over on the channel now. Just because a team looks like it's an easy walkover doesn't mean it is. So we're going to have to knuckle down and make sure we get the win professionally today. Isaac, great ball through to Pulisic. Can he cut inside here? He can. Can he finish it? Pulisic! What a sign-in. What a sign-in Pulisic has been. And I don't think we're going to get a better signing in this transfer window than Pulisic and Isaac. Those two have been incredible for us so far in this career mode. I'd like to see it in the comments, actually. Let me know. Who do you think the better signing has been? Isaac up front or Pulisic off the left? Let me know in the comments down below right now. I, I'm leaning towards Isaac, but every time I lean towards Isaac, Pulisic does something to pull me his way. Before that goal, this game has been very dead, if I'm honest with you. For some reason, my defence are dropping really deep, which I think is something to do with the tactics that Southampton are using. So, because of that, we've been only really collecting the ball pretty deep in our... Look, look now, they're, they're just dropping back so far. I think it must be a tactic that um, Southampton are using that make my players do that. But it does mean that we are, we're are we dropping very, very deep. And we're only collecting the ball, really, within our own penalty spots. So then it takes a long time for us to get the ball forward and we're creating less chances. Oh, no. A really bad pass across there has found Henry. He could be in here. Bring the keeper out. Good save, Dubravka. He has saved us there yet again. Dubravka does save us a lot, but we still definitely need a better goalkeeper. It's weird because, like, rating-wise, we definitely need a better goalkeeper. But performance-wise, he's just brilliant. Isaac plays it through to Alan St. Maximin. What can he do here? He probably needs to look for some support. He wins a corner, at least. Oh, he doesn't. It's a goal kick. Cheeky buggers. Oh, no. They're in the box here with Mata. And Mata finishes it. I don't think that's one Mata. I think that's another Mata potentially i don't have a clue either way they've scored and they've scored their equalizer in this match we've we've been a little bit dangerous with this whole dropping deep thing i'm not really sure what's going on with if i'm honest with you but it leaves a massive gap between our midfield and our defense and they've managed to exploit that there and get their equalizer oh no henry strikes it good save to bravka again we've made it through to half time at 1-1 i'd argue that that's probably pretty fair the way this game has gone we haven't created a massive amount of chances it's jamie matter god knows who that is um yeah we've not created a massive amount of chances unfortunately and southampton have taken the one chance they've had so we need to pick pick it up second half. Dest has got down the right-hand side here. He puts a great ball in. Is it going to be met? Oh, my God. Donny van der Beek. How have you not scored that? We've got to put that down to a good save, surely. Oh, no. How's Mata found so much space? How has he got so much space in the center of the box there? Oh, for crying out loud. He's, he slotted it away. The keeper wasn't pretty either, if I'm honest. But we're 2-1 down against Southampton here. We need to make, make some changes if we're going to get back into this. Because look at how much space he's got. That's tap sober at right centre-back, leaving a massive gap. Okay, the players coming on the camera. Manquillo and Lozano. Fingers crossed they can do something to turn this game around. Here's Lozano down the right-hand side. What can he do here? Can he find anybody? He finds Isaac on the edge. Bruno. It's quite hard to get through this defence, I'm not going to lie. James Ward-Prowse is now coming forward. Can he find Isaac here? He does with a great pass, but Isaac's touch takes it into the centre-back. Oh, no. Matter again. 
How has he got so much space? Honestly, whatever Southampton tactics they're using is, is causing us all sorts of issues. That is a great ball, James Ward-Prowse. Pulisic here. Puts the ball into the box. It doesn't fall to a, a Newcastle man. Can we make anything of this? We can't. Oh, my days. Mankilo here. Can he put a good ball into the box? He can. Isaac's there, but it doesn't fall for him. Last chance. Lozano plays it through to Bruno Gamerez, and he puts it wide. He put it wide. He didn't even hit the target. And that's it. That's the end of the game. We've dropped points. Big points. Three points, in fact, against Southampton. Gamerez could have got us a point at the end, but failed. And uh, admittedly, you know, we can focus on that and say that he should have scored and at least got us a point. But arguably, we shouldn't have got ourselves into that position anyway. At the back, for some reason, we left all sorts of areas for Jane Mata to get into. He scored two goals from two shots. That kind of sums it up, in my opinion. Um, it was bad. It was bad all round. We need to... Uh, just kind of ignore that one <laughs> and move on. The club still want me to revisit the uh, target of being financially beneficial to the owners. Um, yeah, that's not going to happen. So now it's time to move on to your suggestions for players we should get in. So I looked at left backs and Mark Cucurella came up as an 82 rated left back. He's going to cost a fair whack, about 40 mil plus. Uh, we've also got Alfonso Davies in here that was recommended as well. I'm not sure if you were recommending Alfonso Davies or Ben Davies. I've assumed Alfonso, uh, but he's 55 mil. I just don't see that happening. We're going to have to apparently bid between 69 and 99 million to get that deal done. I don't see that one happening. Mark Cucurella, on the other hand, I think if I went for 46.3, we would get him. I'm going to try for Mark Cucurella and play him at left back. He's a... He's a decent name in the market right now, obviously in real life as well, going to Chelsea, I believe it was. So yeah, he's, he's a decent player, can play left mid as well, so he's a backup to Pulisic if we need him to be. Um, and then we had this Raum guy who I haven't had the scout report back on him yet, but we'll keep an eye on that one as well because he can play left back and left mid too. So, let's start with Mark Cucurella, see if we can get a deal done. Right, we've had to pay 54 million for Mark Cucurella. They wanted like 65 though, so I've brought them down a little bit by putting a sell-on clause on that will never happen because we'll finish this series before we even have to sell him. Um, but I think as an 82 rated left back, there's a chance that we could do better than him. We're at least going to try and get him in as a backup though. Um, I think that we've got 82 rated Tagliafico currently, but he's just not very good. Uh, gameplay wise so Mark Cucurella would probably start and then we could maybe look at Raum if he's better than 82 rated to come in and start ahead of Cucurella I don't know let's get Mark Cucurella in and then we'll work from there Mark Cucurella's uh, wage demands were very decent so we've just gone with it he's here for five years um, I think it's a good signing I think regardless of whether he starts or not it's a decent up uh, like bringing into the club I think it's, it's a decent player to bring in because he can be a left mid, he can be a left back. So even if he doesn't start by the end of this transfer window, it's a decent sign-in. For now, he is going into the starting eleven at left back. For some reason, it's coming up with an amber warning saying that he can't play in that position. Yet his positions says left mid, left back. Very confusing. I've gone into his development and said that I want him to be a left back. It says it's going to take 33 weeks, which makes no sense because he, he's already down as a position he can play as left back. I don't know. Might have been a bit of a duff signing. The other position we're looking at, of course, is goalkeeper. We've had a lot of goalkeepers suggested to us, like Jose Sar, for example. I'm going to go through this list now and do a couple of uh, scout reports on these guys. And then also add some into the hub. And we'll go through which ones and see who we want to sign. So at this moment in time for goalkeeper, we have the following. Nick Pope comes in as an 83 rated goalkeeper, which is of course an improvement. He's a bit younger as well, might do well for us. Uh, Lafont is a player that I'm going to be scouting to see what he comes up with. And Jose Sarr as well is a player that we're going to keep an eye on to see if we can uh, work out if he's a good option too. Obviously in real life, Jose Sarr is probably the best out of those three goalkeepers. But FIFA wise, who's going to give us the best rating? Now I won't do anything buying wise for goalkeepers right now let me know in the comments down below who you want me to buy next up we have a game against southampton again this time in the cup 
Let's hope that we can see ourselves past them this time because I would hate to go out of the FA Cup this early. So the first chance for Mark Cucurella to show us what he's got at left back. He's kind of playing out of position, although it does say he can play in this position. I don't know. It's a confusing mechanic. I don't really get it. The first thing he's done is win the ball back, though. So we rate him. No way. The ball has fallen to Henry there for... Oh, that is disgusting. That is actually disgusting the way that's just happened. It was pinball in the box. It's fallen to Henry and he's just scored. I'm not losing this game. I've got to knuckle down. I can't lose to Southampton twice in one episode. Alan St. Maxman coming down the right-hand side. Cuts inside well. Finds... Pulisic. <laughs> I couldn't work out who that was. It's an equaliser in the seventh minute. Two early goals in this FA Cup tie. But I'm so glad to get back into it nice and quickly. I do not want to lose this game. I am going full sweat mode. Which in this room right now is, is pretty easy to do. The thing is, even if it becomes the winter in this room, it's not going to get any better when you've got a PC, a PS5 and my work laptop all running at the same time. It just creates so much heat. Here's Pulisic down the left hand side. Can he get a decent cross in? That's an interesting one. Not sure about that. Isaac into Maximin. He's turned nicely. Maximin to finish it. It's a good save from the keeper. Pulisic here from the corner. Comes in nicely. Strikes it. What a finish. Come on. This is the Newcastle we know and love. This is the this is the side that should have turned up in the Premier League game. They didn't. We're turning it back around in the FA Cup though. Pulisic with two goals in this game. As we said earlier, who's the better signing? Pulisic or um Isaac. It could be Pulisic. He's pulled it out of the bag this episode. His parade coming down the left-hand side. Can he get a decent cross in? He finds Armstrong. It's a good tackle from Dest, you know. Henry strikes from long range. Dubravka saves. I wonder if Dubravka knows like we're looking for a new goalkeeper. I think that's pretty obvious. I think they probably will have heard me talk about it enough on the sidelines. But that also means we need a new captain. And I wonder if he understands that he's going to not be captain for too much longer. Which if you want to let me know in the comments who you want to see as captain, please do so. Here is Alan St. Maximin. I've seen Isaac in the middle. Gets a touch. That would have been an extraordinary goal. Pulisic down the left. What can he do here? Can he find anybody? What the hell is that? Pulisic, your scoring's been great, but your crosses have been rubbish this match. Donny van der Beek's run a long way here and pings it. Oh my days, even though I wasn't talking now, I'd like to think that I've left a little bit of that running because he's ran a long way with the ball at his feet there. And the finish, audacious. Look at how far he's run. He has run from literally his own half with the ball at his feet. And that ping, that is special. Alan St. Maximin's gone. He is onside here. What can he do? Is he going to cut it back? Pull a stitch for the hat-trick. No, it's Gamerez. Gimerez gets himself a goal. It's now 4-1 against Southampton in the first half. This is much more like what we expect from this side. Winning convincingly against Southampton here after a rough start to this game. Okay, we've made it through to halftime. 4-1 is the score. This is much more like it from Newcastle United. Um... Do I make some changes now? Rest some players' legs? I think so. The players getting a rest are Isaac, Gimerez, and Alan St. Maximin. McGinn, Lozano, and Dolberg are coming on. Cucurella looks like he does need a rest, but I'm going to leave him on just because it's his debut and I want to see how good he is. So far, pretty decent. Here's Pulisic encroaching in on the box. Can he find someone in the middle? He does. It's Dolberg, and Dolberg has missed an open goal. For once, Pulisic actually put a decent ball across this game. But that is a massive miss from Dolberg. No, we could be in trouble. Matter, he's done it again. This guy finds pockets in the box so well. I might sign him. He's bloody deadly up top. Oh, Mark Cucurella's found a great ball through to Pulisic. And Pulisic strikes it. What a finish. Jesus Christ. Is that his hat trick, I believe? Mark Cucurella with a ball of dreams. What an assist that is. And that is a great finish from Pulisic as well. That pass there, that is brilliant. Pulisic's finish is obviously nothing to snub at either. But Mark Cucurella, you won't have seen it because you guys don't see the kind of boring bits of a game when I put it into highlights. But the challenges he's made at the back and the little bits that he's done in between have been brilliant. Mark Cucurella, massive signing. Here's Ward Prowse inside the box to score against this old club. He can't do so. Dolberg doesn't shoot. I, I misplaced the button there, I'll admit. Here's Dest down the right-hand side. What delivery can he put into the box? Is a blooming good one. What a delivery and what a finish from Donny van der Beek. We are now absolutely destroying Southampton. But that cross 
That was very decent indeed. We should do like some awards at the end of the season, like a recap of the season, and just like talk about the most, like the best signing, the most underrated player in the club, and that sort of thing. I think that'd be quite a cool thing to do, if I remember. If I don't, then please put it in the comments and we'll do it for our next career mode in FIFA 23. I am actually looking for someone who is willing to help me out with some FIFA 23 content. Uh, it is just something you do whilst you watch my videos and make notes on stuff for me. If you want to be a part of that, then hit me up on the Discord. Link in the description down below and... Uh yeah, I'll get you guys involved. And there we have it, guys. There's the full-time whistle. We win 6-2 up against Southampton, and we progress in the FA Cup. An update on the Premier League table. We are still one point ahead of Spurs, despite dropping three points against Southampton this episode. Now, usually, obviously, we do three games per episode, but because we've got some transfer stuff in there as well, we've just done the two. Next episode, we've got Watford at home and Leeds away. In addition to that, of course, we will be doing lots of transfers so make sure you get your transfer suggestions in the comments down below that's it for this episode guys if you enjoyed it hit me with a massive thumbs up subscribe to this channel if you are new and i'll see you in the next one